All right, everybody, so welcome back to Jim Bob's Garden. Today we're going to talk about water collection, rain collection. How am I going to collect rainwater? So let me take you over here and show you this. So what we got down here is, I, this is a cooler, like an open cooler that actually the uh, previous homeowner gifted to me when I bought the house from her. And if you look up here, you can see that little crack in my gutter. So between that and the strut, that's right there on my um, um, my screen both of those drip water now so if you look up underneath here you can see it was starting to eat away at my concrete and that's where it drips down from that strut down into the concrete so I took this to put it there originally just to protect the concrete but what I found was it was really handy to have that water so I could use that to water the plants that I have in this area and it worked out really cool. So that got me to thinking. I started thinking about um, capturing rainwater and actually getting some rain barrels. So come over here and let me show you about my rain barrels. So mama has been after me for a while to get a rain barrel. And I was kind of hemming and hawing around and looking at a rain barrel. And then we were walking through Walmart and she saw this rain barrel. Now this is a 55 gallon rain barrel, all right, which we got for about 80 bucks. Yeah, which wasn't too bad, $79 and some change. And it's pretty handy. If you look over here, it's got a uh, basically a drain so that when it gets full, it'll start to drain out of here. Now I've taken and put some screen around that. And the reason for that is so that uh, I don't get uh, um, uh, mosquitoes in there. And if you look up in here in the top, you can kind of see that it's got screen in here. And that'll keep the biggest chunks of particulate matter, but the biggest reason for the screen is to keep the um, mosquitoes from again laying their eggs in the water because i don't want to be collecting uh, mosquitoes this top just screws off if you need to get into it all right and then down here we have a connection whereby i can connect to another rain barrel in a series and then over here is my spigot where i can turn it on and cause the water to come pouring out all right which is kind of cool because this water Despite the fact that it's been really warm and it's been two days since it rained, that water's still cool, which is nice. So, I'm going to take you back over here and I want to look at the roof. So if you look at this roof up here, I have a 2100 square foot house. And only this section of the roof is what drains down into the, the gutter on the inside of my pool screen. So really, I've only got maybe even a, a fifth of my roof is actually draining into that drain and 90% of that comes down here. A little bit goes on the other side. There's another uh, uh, spout down there, but most of it comes down here and that is going to go down into the bar uh, rain barrel. So a 2100 square foot house. All right, well, the way you measure the amount of rain is 0.56 inches per square foot. I'm sorry, 0.56 gallons per square foot per inch of rain. So with that calculation, I should be able to get off of the entire roof. Now that doesn't include the garage, but just we'll use 2,100 square foot as a good uh, example for the, the numbers. I should be able to get 1,200 gallons of water for every inch of rain that we get. Now, of course, if I only get half an inch, I only get 600 gallons. If I get a quarter inch, that'll be down to 300 gallons. But still well beyond my capacity to, to capture right now. All right, so if I wanted to capture all that, taking all these 55 gallon barrels, now keep in mind that 55 gallon barrel, because I have the drain at the top and only a certain amount accessible at the bottom, I'm probably only capturing a usable 50 gallons. But even with that, uh, I would need 22 barrels to capture one inch of rain if I wanted to capture all of it. Or I'd need storage um, for around 1,200 gallons of water, which I don't have, and I'm in an HOA, so I'm probably not gonna get permission to put a big old rain, uh, or a big old tank for water. One of the hazards of being in, in, in an HOA. And in fact, the HOA can't see this. I'm curious to see whether if they could see it, whether or not they would actually tell me I had to take it down. All right, so I did some other calculations. All right, so, when I use my hose with my um, spray nozzle, all right, it takes me about 30 minutes to water just my vegetable garden proper. All right, now I've, I measured it out and it takes about a minute 
to fill a five gallon bucket all right with my hose and my nozzle so essentially you're talking about 150 gallons a day that i use now keep in mind it doesn't rain an inch a day here in, in jacksonville florida not even close to it i think our annual rainfall fall is somewhere in the 40 inches so i in order to actually water my entire garden at the amount that i'm used to putting into and that, it's a pretty decent you know calculation because it takes about that much with my sandy soil all right because that water just wants to drain right through it takes about that much water to keep my garden alive so you're talking 150 gallons a day that i use if it's not raining all right so to do that just that 150 gallons i would need to have at least three barrels and you know that's if it rains every day or if i only have to water you know um one time in between rains average probably would be at least three times in between rains so i would need three times that so what i'm getting at is if you're really trying to use your rainwater to water your garden to provide the sole source of water for your garden you're going to need a ton of rain barrels all right like for me i'm thinking it would probably take me at least nine barrels all right and i would have to build something all along this side and put up nine barrels or i'd have to have you know uh, at least 500 gallon tank is what i'm thinking it would take uh, on average to water my yard I, I run my sprinkler system i run 45 minutes on this zone and about 30 minutes on all the rest of the zones and that takes about 2,000 gallons of water to water my yard now that's that's to do the entire yard not just the garden so is this a good idea well i think it's a fantastic idea i'm going to use this and what i'll do is i'll use that uh, primarily though one of the other issues i'm going to tell you so if you look down here i've got it on two center blocks and some old scrap wood temporarily right now the biggest reason i did that is i've got a, a, a raised bed here and i can't put my center blocks where i want them right now because of a the hose that comes off of the, the former drain which i'll dig that out and reset this somewhat uh, i'm thinking about something where i can have at least um at least three barrels over here all right but one of the issues is if you look here this is about knee high a little over knee high to me and then if we look back over here to the garden you can see it is a little bit lower but maybe only a, i don't know a foot or two lower so when i tried using my hose i actually disconnected a hose over here and when I disconnected the hose and put it to the rain barrel, there was not enough pressure to come out of the nozzle at all. All right, with my normal um, nozzle on um, shower setting, essentially. Now, I could get water out if I took the nozzle off, but it pretty much means that I can't really get any kind of forceful pressure enough to go through the nozzle. I might be able to find a different rain nozzle that will work. Um, I'm going to have to investigate into that. But that kind of doesn't allow me to use a hose, which makes it much more difficult. Now, if you look over here, I have my water in bucket, all right, which are, you know, it's just a nice little two gallon bucket. But once again, if, if I had another one and I carried two of these two gallons, four gallons a piece, 150 gallons, that's 30, 35 trips, something like that. That's a whole bunch of trips with two gallon buckets. Um, some other options I could do is I could run PVC, which I may end up doing, down, and then because it is lower there than it is here, I should be able to get the PVC um, to provide water at the garden, at a certain spot in the garden, to where it would just drain out, all right, and if I raise this up, because I can go up, you know, probably another two feet, that would help to elevate it and help to give me a little bit more pressure but you're still going to have pressure problems so the solution to that would be to um, buy a pump but again i mean you're, you're starting to add up the costs all right so buying a pump stalling the pump the pvc you know i'm probably talking a couple hundred bucks just to get rainwater it is a more um sustainable solution all right it really is having the rainwater to, to water my garden would definitely change you know the the amount of water that i buy 
And in the long term, what you want to look at on something like this is the payback time. How long would it take to pay back the cost? And of course, now I'm, I'm not going to go into all that right now with y'all because everybody's situation is different. Everybody's garden is different sizes. Maybe 50 gallons would be enough for you, but this is something you need to think about if you're going to start doing a rain harvesting system like this. Um, how much am I willing to spend and will it save me money in the long haul? Um, even though it is ecologically more sound to do this, uh, it may not be financially sound. And then that's when you got to make that decision. Is it a good choice for me to do something that's going to cost me more, perhaps provide less uh, in order to be more sustainable? which for me it probably will be and over time I will probably increase the amount of barrels I have and uh, try and get this up and running to where it works a little better. Um, there are some battery operated pumps that you can buy that you can run off of solar cells uh, because I wouldn't be using them much. I could use a small, like I know that uh, AutoZone used to sell like a, a $30 battery charger that would probably take a couple of days to charge a battery but I'm only going to use this every couple of days so it shouldn't be an issue I would think. So these are some other things I'm going to look into. But if you want to start doing a rainwater harvesting, before you start investing, do some calculations. Figure out how much water do I need, how much water can I get, um, and then um, how am I going to get the water from point A to point B. All right. So I just wanted to show you what we're doing on our uh, rainwater harvesting. It is something new for us. I'm kind of excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. But um, I'm going to have to figure some more things out to make it an actual viable option to replace water and out of the hose. All right, so thanks once again for stopping by. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, and let me know what you think. And grow something.